Today's case, which occurred in South Korea in 2016, is a chilling reminder that monsters can hide in plain sight. The case came to light when a tourist found part of a man's dismembered body on Taebudo Island in Gyeonggi Province's Ansan City. Known as an ordinary and well-liked individual, Chosong's true nature was shockingly revealed when he was arrested for his crime. Now, let's delve into the case of Cho Sung-ho. On May 1, 2016, a shocking discovery was made at 3.50 p.m. in Ansan City. The lower half of a man's body, packed in a sack, was found in a drain near Puldo Embankment. The man was quite short, around 160 centimeters tall, with small feet. The police quickly set up a team to investigate. The next day, they started a big search near the discovery site at 8 a.m. This search was huge. 900 people in drones were used. Then, on May 3rd, the upper half of the body, wrapped just like the lower half, was found in Shiwa Lake, close to Tebudo Pangamori Pier. This was 11 kilometers away from where the first part was found. Luckily, there was a CCTV camera at the place where the upper half of the body was found. Surveillance footage showed a young man unloading an object believed to be the body from a rented vehicle at a wharf. The body was in such bad shape, especially the face and head, that it was hard to tell if it was a man or a woman. To figure out who the person was, the investigators worked on the left thumb. They removed the damaged skin and used chemicals to bring back the fingerprint. They sent this to forensic experts for more analysis, but the fingerprint was too damaged to identify who the person was. Not giving up, the police took a picture of the left index finger, which was in better condition, and also sent it for examination. Using this picture, they found 12 unique features in the fingerprint and checked it against a huge database. They narrowed it down to about 200 men, aged 17 to 50, from a list of 19 million. The police then matched these 200 fingerprints with a thumbprint from the body. Finally, they found out the body was Che, a 40-year-old man from Yeonsu district in Incheon. This discovery accelerated the investigation. An autopsy revealed that the cause of death was a severe blow to the head. After examining Tre's phone records, the police identified several people he frequently contacted, leading them to his roommate, Cho Sung Ho. On May 5th at 1.50 p.m., the police visited Tre's residence in the Yeonsu district of Incheon. There, they discovered blood splatters on the walls. Upon interrogating Cho Sung Ho at the scene, he confessed to the entire crime. Consequently, he was immediately arrested for murder, dismemberment, and abandoning the corpse. Cho Sung-ho, a 30-year-old from Ujongbu, Gyeonggi Province, shared housing with Tre to save costs. He claimed the murder was accidental, stating that Tre belittled and ordered him around due to their age difference. He first said the killing happened accidentally with a knife during an intense argument between late March and early April 2016. However, he later confessed to a premeditated murder. He admitted that he attacked Tre while he was asleep, striking him multiple times with a hammer he had obtained from a factory. Over the course of more than 10 days, he dismembered Tre's body into two parts and stored them in the bathroom. Then, using a rented car on the night of April 26, he disposed of the body parts at two different locations in Tebudo. The case quickly captured public attention following the rapid apprehension of the suspect. On May 6, 2016, acting under a law meant for extremely violent crimes, the prosecutors made an uncommon decision. They decided that due to the brutality of the crime and its fatal outcome, it was necessary to disclose the suspect's identity to the public. 
This step is usually reserved for severe cases where the suspect is still under investigation but hasn't been formally charged. This law, revised following the Kangosun case in 2009, allows the disclosure of the suspect's identity in violent crimes if the suspect is not underage and there is ample evidence. On May 7th, as Cho Songo was being taken from the Taunan police station to a court hearing, his face was shown to the public for the first time. His ordinary look, unshaven, wearing a hoodie and jeans, surprised many people. While talking to the media, Cho Seung Wo said he was sorry for what he had done and mentioned being scared during the crime. But what really shocked people was how he had been living a normal life in the same house where he committed the crime. For 13 days, Cho Seung Wo kept the body in a small bathroom, just about 3.3 square meters. Because of the tight space, he had to put the legs up against the wall and continued to use the bathroom himself, leaving the body there. Worried about the smell, he started cutting up the body and finally left it in Tebudo on the 27th. While the body was in the bathroom, he went to work, he looked for new jobs and even had a date planned with his girlfriend on the day he got arrested. This made everyone realize just how cold and unfeeling he was. Despite the murder, Cho did not flee and claimed he was unaware of being wanted as he didn't watch the news. But his active social media presence contradicted this claim. Cho Song Wu, in his blog, described himself in a question and answer style, sharing that people often said he looked like actor Park Hae-il and Niel from the famous K-pop group Teen Top. He wrote about feeling shy when complimented on his looks, portraying himself as a typical young man who enjoyed being called handsome. At first glance, Cho Seung-ho seemed hardworking and genuine. His initial explanation for the crime suggested it was a spontaneous reaction to a fight, and he later added that it was provoked by the victim insulting his parents. But the full story was more complex. Back in December 2013, Cho Seung-ho and his girlfriend started a pet cafe called Mila Story in Ujeongbu, Gyeonggi Province. Unfortunately, the cafe closed in December 2014 due to financial troubles after his girlfriend ran away with a considerable amount of money, marking a turning point in his life. On January 2, 2016, Cho Seung ho began working at a motel in Incheon, handling the counter and management duties. Just two days later, on January 4th, he met 40-year-old Choi, who was also working there. Cho and Choi, both employees at the same motel, lived in accommodation provided by their employer. They quickly became friends due to their similar situations. However, after a month, both were fired for not doing their jobs well. That's when Choi suggested they should rent an apartment together. So they started living in a one-room studio apartment in Yeonsu District, Incheon. The lease was under Choi's name, but Cho seung was responsible for the utility bills. The turning point that led to the crime happened around March 10th, 2016. By that time, Cho was working as a karaoke host and struggling with money. Cho seung also worked in the adult film industry to make ends meet. Knowing this, Choi offered Cho seung a deal. He proposed a sexual relationship for 300,000 won each time. On March 31st, while they were drinking together, Cho Seung asked Choi for the money he was promised for their sexual relationship. Choi avoided the question, saying there was no money after a month of not working. Things got worse when Choi, in anger, picked up a fork and threatened Cho Seung to leave the apartment. Cho Seung angry about not getting the money and worried about being thrown out of the apartment, bought a 19 centimeters long kitchen knife on April 1st and kept it in their apartment. Meanwhile, Trey kept telling Cho seung to move out of their shared apartment. On April 12, Cho seung decided he would kill Trey if he didn't agree to his demands. He secretly brought a 35 centimeters long hammer to their apartment. The next day, April 13th, at 12.30 p.m., with a hammer hidden behind the refrigerator near the front door, Cho Seung-ho was confronted by Choi, who was in bed. 
Choi aggressively questioned Cho Sang-ho about his plans to leave the apartment. Cho argued back, demanding the 600,000 won he was promised for their sexual encounters, plus an extra 300,000 won for the apartment deposit that he had paid, asking for a total of 900,000 won. Choi responded with insults toward Cho Sang-ho and his parents, which eventually pushed him to the edge. He grabbed the hammer he had hidden. As Choi tried to escape, Cho Sang-ho yelled, Who are you to insult my parents? And kicked Choi, knocking him down on the bed. In a fit of rage, Cho Sang-ho repeatedly struck Choi's face and chest with the hammer. He then dragged Choi to the bathroom, where he grabbed a kitchen knife and repeatedly stabbed him in the abdomen and chest. In a frenzied state, Cho Sang-ho used the knife to cut open the back and abdominal area of the corpse. He removed most of the internal organs, then divided them into five disposable plastic bags. On April 14th, he disposed of these bags in the general waste collection. From April 15th to April 20th, Cho Sang-ho completely removed and disposed of all the organs. By around April 25th, he had left the corpse in the bathroom until only the skin remained, and then fully separated the upper and lower halves of the body. The next day, at 11.35 p.m., he put two bags with the body parts into the trunk of a rented car. In the early morning of April 27th, around 1.47 a.m., he drove to Prudo in Ansan and left the lower half of the body there. About 15 minutes later at 2 a.m., he disposed of the upper half near Pangamori Pier in Tebudo, then went back to his normal life as if nothing had happened. Later, when looking into why he committed the crime, some thought Cho Sang-ho might be homosexual. The investigation, including interviews and psychological tests, showed no evidence of this. It turned out he was involved in sexual activities just for money. The prosecution said the situation got worse because he didn't get the money he was promised, and he was very upset about being called a prostitute. What's interesting is that people who knew Cho Sang-ho had very different things to say about him, making it hard to understand his true nature. The people in his neighborhood thought of him as a nice, friendly guy. His high school teacher, even after he was caught and identified as a murder suspect, couldn't believe he could do such a thing. Cho Sang-ho was known as a quiet and reserved person, liked by many female students. However, his friends from high school remembered a disturbing incident where he crushed a cat's paw with a rock. They also mentioned that he was very sensitive to any comments that seemed disrespectful. However, the case takes a more complex turn. As reported by YTN, a former colleague of Chu revealed in an interview that approximately three months prior to the crime, around January, Cho sang began inquiring about ways to swiftly kill someone. This information adds a new dimension to understanding Cho's actions and intentions leading up to the murder. This was around the time when he had just met Chue. His ex-colleagues described him as someone who carefully planned things and always achieved his goals. They thought his saying the crime happened spontaneously was just a way to get a lighter sentence or make people feel sorry for him. A former manager commented on Cho sang demeanor during his arrest by the police. He observed that while Cho bowed and apologized, he was smiling. As someone who had worked closely with Cho for a long time, he felt confident that Cho's remorse was insincere. An adult film actress named Chini Kim, who once worked with him, also said she noticed something strange in his eyes and the way he smiled, which made her think he might be a psychopath. This behavior led to speculations about Cho's true character and raised the possibility that he might have harbored thoughts of committing such crimes long before the actual event occurred. Criminal psychologists involved in the case suggested that the crime might have been planned in advance. However, understanding the full picture was difficult because most of the information came from Cho Sang-ho himself. On May 8th, during interrogation, Cho mentioned experimenting with various methods to dismember the body before actually proceeding with it. 
This was evidenced by the injuries found on Tre's body, including his right arm, lung, and a deep cut on the hip. These actions suggest a level of deliberation and presence of mind that is not typically associated with someone acting in a state of fear or panic during the commission of a crime. Cho claimed he had a mental disorder that made him act out violently and couldn't fully control his actions, and he asked for a mental health check. He had to take a lie detector test and go through psychological profiling to see if he was a psychopath. However, the psychological tests showed that Cho Zhongwu didn't have any mental illness or psychopathic traits. He had low self-esteem and normal intelligence, but he tended to think problems were gone if he couldn't see them anymore, showing that he was very focused on himself. Psychologists observed that Cho Zhongwu had trouble seeing the big picture and tended to focus on small details. He lacked the ability to solve problems effectively. They saw this as a lack of insight, where he interpreted things in his own way and paid attention only to certain aspects. Cho zong committed the crime after not being paid for his sexual services, though he wasn't homosexual. The extreme nature of his actions, murder, and disposing of the body in such a cold manner was unusual, especially considering he grew up as the only son among four siblings in a stable family setting. Professor Yi Su-jung from Gyeonggi University, a specialist in criminal psychology, thought Cho Zhongwu might have borderline intelligence, a condition that's hard to explain with standard psychological theories. His thinking was illogical, like believing it was okay to stay in a house without its owner or return there after disposing of a body. The prosecutors wanted him to get the death penalty, but on October 28, 2016, he was given a life sentence at his first trial in the Suwon District Court, Ansan Branch. However, on April 13, 2017, the Seoul High Court reduced his sentence to 27 years. Since Cho Zhongwu didn't appeal again, he's expected to be released in May 2043, when he will be 57, without a chance for early release. Was the dispute over an unpaid sum of 900,000 won the true motive behind the murder? Cho Zhongwu's life painted a contrasting picture. Although the murder stemmed from a financial disagreement, Cho harbored grand ambitions for his future. In April 2014, he shared on Facebook his aim to earn millions within a few years, actively promoting his financial planning and loan services, reflecting his high aspirations. To those around him, Cho zong was perceived as a financial planner. However, in reality, he held various jobs, including working at a loan company, karaoke bars, and in the adult film industry. This raises the question, who was the real Cho zong Cho zong behavior and choices paint a picture of an extreme egotist, someone who managed to blend into ordinary life while harboring deeper, more complex, and conflicting aspects of personality. His ability to maintain this facade, coupled with his criminal actions, continues to baffle experts. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.